is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. I ask and I would see to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory dwells better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts thousands elsewhere better is one day better is one in your house better is one day thousands elsewhere thousands elsewhere my heart and flesh cry out for you the living God my spirit's water to my soul I've tasted and I've seen, come once again to me, I will draw near to you, I will draw near to you, to you, and better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day, better is one in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts. Welcome to this time of worship at Greenville Oaks Church of Christ this morning. My name is Colin Packer, and I'm the lead minister here at Greenville Oaks, and we're so glad you've decided to join us to worship this morning. Uh, we have an exciting uh, day of worship ahead. We'll be singing some songs, uh, sharing in a, a time of a communion that we'll lead out of our service with to prepare you to take in your home. So if you want to gather those materials, if you haven't already, have those on hand. But this morning we get to do something special that's not happening for the community we're particularly focused on this morning. Things have changed uh, for so many of us, but particularly so for our high school seniors who are graduating. And uh, graduation ceremonies are going to look different this year. And uh, that's a real loss for these students in our church. But we want them to know they're not just part of the future church, they're part of this church family. Many of our volunteers, many of you have uh, taught these children the Bible growing up. You've been on youth group trips with them in our student ministry, and they've grown so much in their faith and in their walk. And this morning, we're excited to hear from them about what's important. You know, it was uh, almost 20 years ago now, on 9-11 as we refer to it today, I was sitting in my high school uh, government class. I was sitting next to my wife, Holly, at the time, and we heard those words on that Tuesday about a plane going into one of those towers. And uh, that was a, an earth-shattering moment. There were so many questions about what is the world going to be like now? And uh, what's interesting about this group of seniors is their bookends of their life up to this point started with 9-11. Many of them were born right around that time. Uh, this class. And this is their graduation time as the COVID-19 virus is disrupting their graduation time. And so I have just been excited to uh, have this Sunday come so they could share a little bit of the uniqueness of how God is preparing this generation, this class, to be leaders with the specific gifts that are brought and only ripened in the midst of challenges and crises such as we're facing right now. 
Uh, so I'm excited for us to engage back in our worship at this time. We'll be singing some songs. Sing along with us at home and look forward to celebrating these high school seniors with us here at Greenville Oaks.
one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where your help comes from. Let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation. 
so desperately need you. And today, all of creation sings out your praise. All creation declares that you are greater than any catastrophe. You are greater than any crisis. You are greater than any pandemic. And God, you are worthy of our praise. Jesus, thank you so much for salvation that we have and the strength that you give us to live through times like these. God, I specifically pray that you will bless every one of the seniors in our faith community, all 16 students. God, prepare them for something great through this time. I know it's not what they expected. It's not what we expected for their graduations. But God, even in the hardest of times, you can shape us, you can mold us more into the image of Jesus and for greater service in this kingdom. God, to you be glory and praise is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning we continue in our worship, and it's so great to be together to honor our Lord and Savior, to praise Him, and it's great to be together to celebrate our seniors uh, that are graduating. And this morning, the music that has been selected, almost all of the music has been selected by our seniors, and so we enjoy being able to worship uh, with songs and that are meaningful to them and that honor God too. So let's continue in our time together. Sing and be happy. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem gray all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see, my friend, trust in his promises grand. Sing and you'll be happy today. Press along to the goal. To the goal. Trust in him who leads you. He will keep your soul. Let the all be faithful. Look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in soul. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and you'll be happy, be happy, press on to the goal. Trust in him who leads you, he will keep your soul. your voice and praise him in soul, sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by, there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust him each day, we shall have treasure untold. Sing and you'll be happy be today. Be happy, press on, on to, the to the goal. Trust in Him who leads you. He will keep soul. your soul. Let the all the way be faithful. Go. Look to Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. I will not falter, I will not faint. He is my shepherd, I am not afraid. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. He will uphold me all of my days. I am so
surrounded by mercy and grace. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. I will not waver walking by faith. He will be strong to deliver me safe. The joy of the Lord is the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong Yeah, but... 
says is we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Amen. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tent his skies with heavenly hue and framed the worlds with his great mind. There is a God. There is a God. He is alive. He is a God that we should know, who speaks from his inspired word. There is a God. There is a God. He is alive. He is alive. And we live. In him we live. And we survive. And we survive from the star God. From the star God. We church. My name is Wes Raspberry, and I have the honor of serving as the student minister here at Greenville Oaks. And today is a very special day. Today we get to honor our high school seniors, our graduating seniors. Today is our senior Sunday. And before you go for your remote or your mouse to click to something else, let me urge you to stay tuned with us, because I believe that today's service will be impactful and that it will share a message of hope in this time. It's important for us to recognize this great milestone in the lives of our seniors. This is a time of transition between high school and college. It's the ending of one season and the beginning of something different, something new. And it may be, it may be important for us now more than ever to rally around our seniors as they're experiencing this unprecedented and unknown and, and time full of anxiety. They're crossing this bridge between high school and college, not even knowing what the bridge is going to look like come fall. So let's celebrate our seniors today. As I've been mulling over what to say, as I've been uh, prepping for today, thinking about this over the past couple weeks, to be honest, I've hit some walls. What message can I share to family, to church, to seniors in the midst of a global crisis. So that said, Colin, you can have your job and your stage back next week. 
However, again, it's crucial that we celebrate our seniors. And so there, there are three words that have, uh, words or phrases that have kept returning to my mind as I've been prepping for today. The first of these is the word pride. In the sense of, we are proud of you. I am so thankful to be at a church that deems our students and our seniors worthy enough to focus on multiple times throughout the year. We have a time dedicated, a Sunday dedicated to celebrating and honoring you, seniors. And not only that, but this afternoon we're also going to rally around you again. This afternoon, if you haven't heard, is our drive through senior celebration from 2 to 3.30 in the north parking lot. I hope you all can come and, and join us for that. Our seniors will be set up in the parking lot, and you can drive around, loop around them, and yell at them, encourage them, and even drop off a gift if you so choose. To adhere to socially uh, distancing rules, we ask that all participants stay in their cars and our building will remain locked. But again, I urge you, if you're able to, please come celebrate our seniors with us. It is so important. But again, seniors, hear me say, we are proud of you. We are proud of your accomplishments. We are proud of the men and the women that we have seen you grow to be. We are proud of you. So let us celebrate our seniors today. We're about to show a picture of each of our seniors. And, and in that time, I will read a little bit about each one. Celebrate our seniors with me today. Conlin Abbott, son of Edward and Jennifer Abbott, graduating from Allen High School. Conlin plans to attend Texas State University to study finance. Anna Barachik, daughter of David and Shauna Barachik, graduating from McKinney High School. Anna plans to attend Texas A&M to study psychology. Abby Darius, daughter of Shelby and Tammy Walker, graduating from McKinney Boyd High School. Abby plans to attend Collin College and then transfer to a four-year college to study biology. Zach Dodson, son of Sean Dodson and Joanne Dodson, graduating from Plano East High School. Zach plans to attend Abilene Christian University to study computer science. Lauren Eitenmiller, daughter of Daniel and Ellie Eitenmiller, graduating from Allen High School. Lauren plans to attend the University of North Texas to study anthropology. Addison Hamby, daughter of Chuck and Jennifer Hamby, graduating from Allen High School. Addison plans to attend the University of Texas at Austin to study advertising. Bradley Kofal, son of Jeff and Sharon Kofal, graduating from Lovejoy High School. Bradley plans to work full-time. Brandon Kofal, son of Jeff and Sharon Kofal, graduating from Lovejoy High School, plans to attend the University of North Texas to study music education. Chandler Mazza, daughter of Matt and Kristen Mazza, graduating from Plano Senior High School. Chandler plans to attend Stephen F. Austin State University to study social work. Desiree Mejia, daughter of Leo and Omega Mejia, graduating from homeschool. Desiree plans to pursue Air Force and college education. Sam Nicholson, daughter of Scott and Sue Ellen Nicholson, Graduating from Allen High School, Sam plans to attend either the University of, K of Kentucky or Texas Tech to study human health services. Malia Rice, daughter of Mark and Grace Rice, graduating from Lucas Christian Academy. Malia plans to attend Harding University to study international business. Carly Schaefer, daughter of Michael and Dina Schaefer, graduating from Lovejoy High School. 
Carly plans to attend and play softball at St. Edward's University to study business administration. Dylan Shaw, son of James and Teresa Shaw, graduating from Independence High School. Dylan plans to attend Collin College and then transfer to a four-year university to study graphic design. Sarah Shinsato, daughter of Stan and Carrie Shinsato, graduating from Hope Prep. Sarah plans to attend college and then transfer to study nursing. Drew Watson, son of Josh and Shannon Lander and Andy and Jocelyn Watson, graduating from Allen High School. Drew plans to attend Collin College and then transfer to the University of North Texas to study music education. We have asked one of our shepherds, Todd Vogt, and their family to specifically bless this group in a time of prayer today. But before we get to that video, let me share the second word or phrase that has kept coming to my mind as I've been prepping for today. It's the phrase, not alone. I think particularly right now, we are vulnerable to thinking that we are alone. And, and you might be. You might be the only person in the room that you're watching in. You might be the only person in the house that you're watching in right now. We are isolated. We are socially distant. We feel like we are alone. But hear me say this. We are not alone. You are not alone alone. You are never alone. We believe in a God who is powerful and big and almighty, and even in the times when you physically might be the only person in the room, we believe in a God who is big enough and who is great enough to be in that very same room with you. And not only that, but we are a family. We are a church. We are a body of believers, together called his family. And so, all who are watching, but especially you seniors. This message is for you. You are not alone. Thus, this blessing and celebrating today, it's not just coming from me, and it's not just coming from student ministry, but it's coming from our shepherds, our leadership, our staff, and from our church at large. So let's hear now from the votes. Hey, Greenville Oaks seniors, it's the Vogue family. We want to let you know how proud your Greenville Oaks family is of you, and we look forward to celebrating with you in person soon. We know this has been a really tough time for you guys, um, but we just want to let you know and remind you that God is present in all situations. So we'd like to lead a prayer over you and ask God to bless you. So if everybody that's worshiping with us, if you would bow and join us in prayer. Oh, Father, this morning we gather before you and we thank you for the completion of another academic year as unique as this year has been and for giving us this opportunity to celebrate our new graduates. We're grateful for the guidance you have given each of them as they've worked hard to arrive at this milestone. We're equally grateful for allowing them to be part of this church We as a church have no doubt loved them imperfectly, but we have striven to surround them with encouragement, wisdom, and support as they've grown into the impressive young men and women that they are today. For them, Father, we are deeply thankful. This morning, Father, we lift each of them up to you and ask that you guide our graduates as they reach this end and as they chart new beginnings. Please help them to continue to grow in their faith and to make it, and to make the world a better place, to serve others in true solidarity, to seek ways to help the poor, the marginalized, all of those who suffer, and to always seek the good of those around them. Father, we know that some of them will experience hardships as some of them already have, and we ask that you grant them solace and strength to endure those with faith and perseverance. Father, we thank you for giving us the, this opportunity to build our community with these young people. And while they are starting new chapters of their lives, we ask that the bonds that have been created here at Greenville Oaks will remain strong despite any distance. Finally, Father, 
we entrust these young men and women into your hands to bless them and guide them, challenge them and develop them into the faithful men and women, your church and our communities and our world needs. Father, we lift them up to you and we ask all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Todd and Candace and Lucas, for those words and that encouragement. It's one of my great joys and goals, actually, in my ministry for my students to lead. Today, we have six of our 16 seniors who took on the challenge to help lead us in our service today by sharing their own thoughts and their own hearts. As we watch these videos, these messages from these seniors, I pray that you might hear the great hope and joy that they have even in the midst of the circumstances they are facing. Good morning, church. Y'all can go ahead and be seated. Sorry, I know that's a bit of a redundant thing to say since we aren't meeting in person today, but uh, it's one of those things I've always wanted to say since I was a child and I didn't want to miss the opportunity. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Zach Dodson. I am Sean Dodson's oldest child and I am now a senior. I'm one of the few kids here that does not attend Allen High School, and I'm going to be graduating from Plano East Senior High. If the cards align, I'll be attending ACU next year with the intention of getting a degree in computer science, but plans are always subject to change. I've been going to Greenville Oaks ever since I can remember, and my family is well known for providing massive amounts of bacon on Father's Day weekend, but I'm pretty sure most of you know my dad for reasons other than bacon. I was part of a generation of kids who knew a treehouse that didn't look like it was in an actual tree, and half of this building wasn't even built yet. I have so many great memories, whether it was at events such as Little, Little Lambs, Love Where You Live, LTC, and musicals, or just singing with Miss Marty about how Jesus is my cheeseburger. One of my most vivid memories of Greed and Vlogs was in Faith Finders and learning about the armor of God. Let me tell you, there is nothing scarier than when Mr. Hale and Mr. Nicholson has a group of middle school boys and is treating them like they're in the army. See, I am convinced that Green Vlogs has created the perfect formula for raising children. I mean, it's pretty simple at its roots. You throw a bunch of kids together at a really young age and you let them grow in faith. Then you throw in some influential figures such as Wes Raspberry, Larry Fox, Martin Tugger, and then boom, the best youth group ever created. But on a more serious note, the relationships that I've created through this youth group have been my foundation. The group of kids that I have grown up with has provided me with the strongest relationships I have to this day. They never let you disappear and they are always there with an inviting text for you to come join them. I love each and every person in this youth group and I am so grateful God has placed my family at Greenville Oaks. Now, on to the present. We, we were a generation born into the world during 9-11, and now we are graduating with COVID-19. Now, I'm no scientist, but I would say we should keep a close eye on 2024. You know, it's funny how at first we were so excited about another week of spring break, and now, as my grandma says, we hold the record for the longest senior skip day. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This situation definitely sucks. The rest of my senior year has been completely stripped away from me, and I won't get to experience things such as my senior prom, and I'm going to be graduating through a car window. There are many people I may never see again, and my yearbook may never get signed. For others, this may seem like minute problems, but for me and many others, this was our world. Throughout my life, I have learned that God has a plan, and even if it doesn't correspond with your own, rest assured there is a reason for everything he does. God gives us trials in order to make us stronger, and at the moment, these may not be fun, but days, weeks, or even years later, we may finally see a reason God has put these situations into our lives. If there is one thing I want you to get out of my speech, just remember that God has a plan for you, and I urge everyone to try and think of why God might have put COVID-19 into your life. Thank you for your time. Go in peace. Good morning. My name is Chandler Mazza, and I'm going to share just a few words with y'all. It was 2010 when my dad had just accepted a position on staff at some church in Allen. I was sad to leave my old church family, and I was nervous to have to make friends and be accepted into this new place with new people. But little did I know that Greenville Oaks was much more than just some church in Allen. When we first came to GEO, we were welcomed with open arms, full hearts, and so much love for us. So thank you for that. Thank you for helping my faith be stronger than it ever has been. Thank you for allowing me to be myself. And most of all, thank you for never failing to teach us kids about our almighty God. Unfortunately, my senior year, along with so many others, was cut short, and we're missing out on things that we've looked forward to for years. We didn't get to go to prom. We didn't get to say goodbye to friends that we might not get to see again. And we were not able to enjoy and live out the last couple months of the year we've all been waiting for. However, 
During this time of isolation and social distancing, I've had lots of time to think. Time to think about why is God letting this happen? Why is God making so many people suffer physically, mentally, financially? Why isn't he fixing this? But then I'm reminded that in Isaiah 41.10, it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So what I have learned from COVID-19 and what I want to share with you today is to not worry and that things will get better. God isn't just letting this happen. I know that can be hard to remember sometimes. And for me personally, I find myself getting anxious about the many unknowns of our world today. But he's got it all under control, and I think that's something that we need to be reminded of. For me, having that reminder before I leave for college is an absolute blessing. Because moving to a new city with people that I don't know, places that I'm unfamiliar with, and making it my new home can be so nerve-wracking. With all that being said, thank you Greenville Oaks family for everything you've done for me for the past 10 years and will continue to do. I love you all and act some jacks. Good morning, church. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Carly Schaefer, the oldest daughter of Michael and Dina Schaefer. Um, Some of you may also recognize me as the girl who frequently shows up to church in a softball uniform. Um, I plan to graduate from Lovejoy High School at the end of this month and then continue my education and softball career down in Austin, Texas at St. Edwards University. I've been attending Greenville Oaks with my family for approximately 17 years now, which just so happens to be how long I've been alive. Um, And I'm so grateful that my parents settled at this church before I came into the picture. As I look back on my experience at Greenville Oaks, I'm reminded of all the fond memories that I share with a lot of my other fellow teens in the youth group. From children's worship with Miss Marty O'Rear and Bonnie Neville, aka Miss Mary Hart, to Christmas musicals, VBS, to youth group activities and regular Sunday morning classes. This church has shaped me in so many ways and given me so many memories that I will forever be thankful for. So let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Yes, I'm a senior right now. And yes, Corona has kind of put a hitch in my plans for my supposed to be perfect senior year that I had envisioned. I missed my last season of high school softball, my senior prom, along with many other fun senior festivities. And it has been officially announced that I will be graduating in my car at the end of this month. To some of you, these things may seem minuscule, but these are the things that my fellow classmates and I have been looking forward to since freshman year. In these times of sadness and loss, it's easy to let doubts and fear creep into your life. In these times experiencing a global pandemic and self-isolation, it feels as though God is also partaking in social distancing. At least that's how I felt the past few weeks. Originally, when I was writing this speech, I wanted to touch on the fact that despite the apparent loss, there is hope and that God is in control. But how could I preach about hope when I couldn't see any in my own life? I struggled for a while and prayed about what I should say in order to not be hypocritical in my speech. And I never felt like God was really listening. However, about a week ago, a small group of my church friends met in the parking lot and worshiped and had fellowship in our cars together. The night was awesome. At the end of the night, one of my friends was wrestling with life and doubt, and she was pouring out her feelings to another girl and I. And it was in that moment that I finally felt the presence of God again. Our relationship was so rooted in Christ that by just sharing our problems, a glimmer of hope was shown to me. I was reminded that God put me in this earth, and my life is His. Ultimately, He is in control, and He decides my future. My faith in Christ is being restored through the relationships that I have in this church, and that is just another reason why I can't thank the church enough. It has also reminded me that in the midst of struggle, change, and doubt, the Lord will remain constant, and He will always be rooting for you and I until the end of our life here on earth. And with all that being said, I'm signing off, church, and headed off to college soon, but don't worry, because I'll come back to visit from time to time. Thank you. Good morning, church. My name is Sam Nicholson, and I am the middle child of Scott and Sue Ellen Nicholson. I will be graduating from Allen High School, and I don't know where I'm attending college yet, but I will be studying kinesiology to move into physical therapy. This day isn't exactly as I'd imagined it to be. I'm not actually standing in front of you right now. There's no celebration after this in the teen center, and there are about a thousand other things in question. Being a senior during this time is hard. I can't tell you how many times I've cried about not seeing my young students as a pal, not getting my last band concert, not getting a senior prom, and maybe not even getting to graduate out of Eagle Stadium. 
this was the singer's last chance for that last hurrah right before we take off and go to college, and we didn't have that chance. I've constantly been pointed to the Lord during this time. I was content with where I was at just before all this started, but then Corona hit and things started to fall apart. How do I put my faith and trust in a God who is so big that he could end us all and he doesn't? How do I surrender control of my broken heart from losing the best semester to God? The disease, darkness, and death our world is facing right now is intimidating. But even in the midst of that, God's promise still stands. And I find myself being pointed back to the word, specifically in Philippians 4, 7, which says this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. He says to believe and trust in me, and I will give you overwhelming peace and joy. I realize that instead of dwelling on what could have been, I should be thanking God for what he has provided me in the last 16 years people in it. I've been so blessed to be a part of Greenville Oaks and its children's and student ministries. If you've ever thought about serving teens, you should do it. You might just become one of the most important people in those students' lives. Kelsey and Larry Fox, Greg Pirtle, Lisa Lee, Martin and Sharon Tucker, and Anthony Patton have been staples for me. And I am beyond thankful for the ways they've served and continue to serve this church and the student ministry. But I jumped the gun a little, so let me tell you about my family. My family has been at Greenville Oaks for 16 years. You might recognize us as the family that coordinates outfits on Sunday mornings. There are so many fond memories that I have that are connected to this church. Singing musical songs in the treehouse while coloring with my friends, trying to frantically catch up on my Bible reading so I can grab those Bible books, traveling to Dallas for LTC every Easter weekend, and being guided by the hand of the Lord through my childhood. But he didn't stop there. Things like Trek, Camp Deer Run, ACU camps, back to school retreat, Sunday nights, and D now are just a few of the big things that have brought me to the Lord. This church has opened the door to those things. My family and I have been surrounded by love here, and I'm so thankful to have grown in this church family. He has surrounded me specifically with so many beautiful friendships. I feel like I can be myself. I can be vulnerable with my church friends. I feel welcomed and encouraged, and I've met truly some of the best people through this church. I can honestly say that God only knows where I'd be without the people that this church has brought to me. My sophomore year of high school, I was choosing what I wanted to put on my letter jacket. At the time, I was struggling to find my purpose and had a hard time understanding how God was working in my life. I knew I wanted a Bible verse on my jacket, but nothing I'd read before really seemed right. So for the 10 minutes I was standing in line to order the jacket, I frantically searched for a verse that spoke to me and it came to me immediately. I came across John 16, which says this, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And that's what's on my jacket to this day. Little did I know how relevant that verse would be to this day. John doesn't say if you have trouble, he says when you have trouble, to take heart and have confidence in knowing that the king is in control. Would you please pray for this class that in the coming months, God has a plan in the unknown and we are each important to him, even when we struggle with doubt and uncertainty. This morning, I want to leave you with this song lyric. It's a piece of the song, The Blessing by Elevation Worship. And it says this, Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sarah Shinsato, and some of you may know me, a lot of you probably don't, but me and my family started coming here last August, and before then, I'd been going to Highland Oaks all my life. Coming here was a really big change in my life, but I'm so thankful for it. I felt welcomed into the youth group immediately, but also knew a few people before joining, which helped a lot. While I've only been a part of this church for 10 months, I've already made some really great friends. My favorite memory in this youth group is a road trip to Arkansas in April, and on that trip, I grew closer with a lot of others in the youth group and my friends. This year, my faith has gotten a lot stronger, and I know this church was a big part of that. From class on Sunday mornings to Sunday nights, I grew and learned a lot. Talking about spiritual disciplines on Sunday nights taught me how to read the Bible and to really absorb what's being said, along with being a better encourager and how to soak in God's presence. My amazing small group leaders, Jesse and Joe Lynn, um, have been such a good influence on my life this past year and have encouraged me so much. So obviously this is a strange time for everyone um, with all this coronavirus stuff going on. Um, as a senior, this has really impacted me with the rest of my senior year being moved online. 
It's weird to think that the day before spring break was my last day in high school being able to see all my teachers and some of my friends for the last time. Thankfully, my graduation and senior prom have been only been postponed rather than being canceled, which I'm really thankful for knowing that many other seniors um, were not as fortunate. So the verse I'd like to leave you all with is one I've been thinking about this week, and it's from Isaiah 41.10, which says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And I think that's such a good verse to keep with you and to remember during this time of uncertainty and fear. Um, this is God just telling us, don't be afraid, I am with you. And this is such a good reminder for me too, as I graduate in this weird time. I hope it's a good reminder for you too. Thank you. Hey everybody, my name is Anna Brachik, and I am the daughter of Shauna and David Brachik. Before I get started today, I just have one small favor to ask. Um, I know it's technically nighttime, but it'll be daytime whenever you guys are watching this. So whenever I say, good morning, Greenville Oaks, it would be awesome if you guys could reply with good morning, no matter where you are. Okay, ready? Good morning, Greenville Oaks. Okay, I hope you replied, or else that was just kind of an awkward silence. Um, so thank you for humoring me. Um, I'm assuming a few of you at least will recognize me. I've been attending Greenville Oaks my whole life, and I in part attribute the fact that I exist today to the prayers of our elders about 18 years ago. Um, they prayed that I would have my whole life devoted to the Lord, and honestly, I believe that has come to pass um, due to the influence of this church. Um, my journey with the Lord has been influenced by various ministers and interns and volunteers and all different people that I've passed through our church over the years. Um, and I'm beyond thankful for what these people have done for me. I know I will never forget the memories I made in Treehouse, singing with my friends and going to Kadish and going on track and even just Wednesday nights. Um, I'm going to treasure those memories forever. And they have truly impacted um, my walk with Christ and my walk with others in so many ways. And I can never say thank you enough for that. Um, but beyond thanks, there's a few things I've been put on my heart that I want to share with the church. First of all, if you are thinking about helping with the student ministry, please do it. Please do it. Um, I know that teenagers kind of have a stereotype of being a little bit standoffish for an adult and a little bit angsty even maybe sometimes, but I promise we're all just kind of awkward, but like we really do appreciate adults of all ages volunteering with our group. It really just, it means so much to us to see um, all different people in our church taking time out of their day just to be with us. Um, we'll really do our best to be not awkward, and I promise most of us are very nice, and um, it, it's, you're going to change some lives. I don't know if we'll change yours, but I know that you're going to change ours. Um, so if you're thinking about that, please go for it. We would love to have you around. Next, I want to remind everyone that different is not bad. Change is not a bad thing. Um, I encourage you not to become complacent in your faith or with what you believe. Um, always be asking more questions. Always be pushing to go deeper. We believe our God is a great God because He is. So don't be afraid to ask Him questions. He wants us to try to go deeper. He wants us to dive into His Word and fully try to explore every possibility. Um, don't be afraid to get a conversation with others. Um, be f you are free to ask questions about why do we put people in certain roles in our church and what factors play a role in that and why do we do that? What does it look like for the Holy Spirit to abound in this place and really work through every single person of this body? Um, we are all on the same team. We are all Christians. We have nothing to be afraid of when talking with one another. Um, if anything, we should be more and more open about our opinions and less and less inclined to hide them because we are family. Um, so I just think that that is something that every single person needs to hear because I think there are a lot of tough topics that we need to discuss more in our church um, and just in our families too and with our friends and brothers and sisters. Um, anyways, moving on, I finally would like to ask you to pray for all students at this time. Um, I really miss normal life and I'm honestly super bummed that I don't get a normal senior year like I've been looking to for years. Um, it's tough, I won't lie, but I've been working on rejoicing in the Lord um, during this time. I'm rejoicing in the fact that he has taken this away. And that's kind of counterintuitive to what we're taught. But the goodness of God is not limited to my very human definition of what is good. Um, in Philippians 3, it says our citizenship is in heaven, not on this earth. This world is very temporary. And it seems especially during this time with everything that's changing that we're really seeing how fragile our world is in every single aspect. Um, but through all of these hardships, we are able to see that God's kingdom and he himself is unwavering. Um, and that doesn't really make it feel a lot easier right now, but we can take comfort in that. Um, and we are still surrounded by the body of Christ constantly, even from afar. We're still surrounded by our brothers and sisters. Um, and I am so thankful to Greenville Oaks that they have taught me that truth that has gotten me through this time. Um, 
and I hope that I can be of some encouragement to you to stay strong and stay connected during this time. Thank you for being my home, Green Bullocks. I love you guys. Thank you so much, seniors, for sharing your thoughts and your hearts with us today. I hope that you are blessed by the incredible amount of hope that each of them shared, despite the circumstances and situations that they are walking through. In fact, this word hope is the third and final word that has kept coming to me over the past couple weeks. My wife Kylie and I have recently been watching all of the Marvel movies, um, and there are so many of them. Um, there are 23 to be exact. If you need something to fill your time, start that. It is an undertaking for sure. But what's interesting to me and what's kind of stood out in watching all these movies is that in every single movie, there's a moment, there's a point where the tide seems to turn. And, and the fight seems to go the opposite way that you think it's supposed to go. It seems like the bad guys get the upper hand. It seems like the, the hero is going to lose. It seems like hope is going out the window. And, and it's almost as if the, the scene goes into slow motion and the music goes from upbeat to something that's slow and somber. Hope seems lost. The evil guys, the evil ones, seem to win. I think this is relatable for where we're at today. I think it might be easy for us to relate to this idea. Maybe in this season, you've experienced great loss or pain. Maybe your life seems like it's in slow motion. Maybe it seems like the tune is slow and sad. But let me remind us, church, let me remind you seniors, as people of Jesus, we have hope. We believe Jesus died on the cross, and in that move, he took our sins upon himself. Not only that, but when Jesus died, he did not stay down. I love the songs that we sing, the lyrics of contemporary worship. The, the tomb was borrowed for three days. Our God has robbed the grave. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, hell, where is your victory? Church, family, seniors, this message is for all of us. There is hope. Our God is bigger than this. Our God is still in control. Our God has won. So seniors, as we wrap up our time this morning, I pray that you might know and hear these three phrases as truth. We are proud of you. You are not alone. And there is hope. To continue celebrating this hope, let us continue in our praise and worship of our great God.
light is breaking through the dark of night will not overtake me I am pressing into you Many 
sons to glory. going to celebrate the sacrament of communion now. And while we might not be able to physically gather around a table, we are all called to the table of God. There's a seat for each and every one of us. To lead our time and our thoughts this morning, some dear friends of ours and friends of many of our seniors would like to share some words. I wonder if the disciples knew the significance of the Last Supper when they were in it. I wonder if it was like any other meal. Was Peter joking? Was Thomas rolling his eyes? Um, I've been thinking about special meals or communions that we've shared. Um, even in these times of quarantine, have the, our, our meals with Madden um, as a newborn. Uh, I'm sure we can't even fathom how special they are and the memories that we're making during this time. I think about meals that we've shared with seniors, the laughter we've had, the hopes and the fears um, that we've shared and more laughter. Um, uh, the thing with seniors is that we know the timing of what's going on. The beginning of June uh, brings the end of high school and August brings on the next phase, but uh, their time has been cut short. And I can't imagine, um, I wouldn't have ever been able to imagine that we would enter into this season or um, how long it would be or when um, the certainty of when the new normal will return. I wonder if it's a glimpse of how the disciples felt. Um, Jesus' time was cut short and there was no idea of when a new normal would return. Um, but he did leave the gift of communion um, to symbolize the greatest act of love that um, ever happened, which was Jesus dying on the cross. It's a reminder that although there's pain and brokenness and suffering, joy and resurrection and redemption are coming, and the bread and juice remind us of that. You know, Kelsey's right. Um, these are uncertain times, as we all know, but um, the thing that we know and love about Greenville Oaks and about our community is that um, the families that are here are so special to us and have made such an impact on us. And uh, I hope that we continue to do that for one another at Greenville Oaks. 
um, seniors, uh, I, I can't begin to fathom what you're thinking at this point in time in your lives. Um, just know that each and every one of you are special to us um, and that we've spent some very special times with you and it's made the, the, the best memories um, that Kelsey and I have had while here at Greenville Oaks. Um, we thank you for that and we thank our community for that. Um, in these uncertain times, just know that our paths don't change. Um, number one, our road to redemption and to salvation is through Jesus Christ uh, and our relationship with him. Um, you know, Jesus is in a nonstop, all-out sprint with gazelle-like intensity pursuit for our hearts, for our love. And it's our time now more than ever um, to return that favor and be in an all-out pursuit for Jesus every single day. Uh, that's my hope and my prayer for everyone. Um, you know, and in, in Hebrews chapter 10, um, it states, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we uh, profess. For he who is promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Church, um, I want to say a special prayer uh, over everyone. If you would, bow your heads with me, please. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for the people who um, gather uh, within our church, uh, whether it be virtually uh, or they're gathering uh, as worship leaders um, or as our ministerial staff. We thank you so much for them and the blessing they are to our community and to our family. Lord, for these seniors, um, please continue to watch over them as they transition into a new time, into young adulthood, um, give the parents patience um, as these young men and women venture out into the world and make a name for themselves and start their journeys uh, and put their stamp on this world. Lord, place your hedge of protection over them. Uh, watch over them and help them to be safe and stay strong. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, foxes. To, to close our time today, I would like to read and echo the words of Paul from Ephesians 3 as a benediction for all who are watching, but especially over our seniors. This is why I kneel before the Father. Every ethnic group in heaven or on earth is recognized by him. I ask that he will strengthen you in your inner selves from the riches of his glory through the Spirit. I ask that Christ will live in your hearts through faith, as a result of having strong roots in love, I ask that you'll have the power to grasp love's width and length, height and depth, together with all believers. I ask that you'll know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge so that you'll be filled entirely with the fullness of God. Glory to God, who is able to do far beyond all that we could ask or imagine by his power that is at work within us. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and always. Amen. Until next week, church, sisters and brothers, may you generously share in the abundance that is yours in Christ. Go in peace today.